Hey YouTube, it's Brandon Red here with Ramen Noodle Budgets. So in today's video, we are going back to my historic YouTube roots. If you began following me years and years ago, you guys may know my channel was originally called Bloody Guy 9898. This channel is actually, I think, 10 years uh, old today, considering my first video was posted in uh, 2008, where I was 10 years old. Now that I just did the math in my head, I am so smart. Oh yeah. Back when I was around 10 or 12 years old, uh, this is a few years being into my channel, uh, I posted a Jason Mask tutorial, and that was the first video on YouTube that taught me that no matter how young you are, adults on YouTube can still be horrible people. Not that that's the matter of this video at all, but I really wanted to go back and actually redo some of my videos, and I thought this would be a great place to start. So I was walking through Walmart yesterday at 11 o'clock because I was um, getting some sugar to make stupid desserts like I usually do at 11 o'clock at night. Stumbled upon one of these. Uh, this is one of your average Halloween store hockey masks, except this cost 98 cents. Yeah, you guys see that? 98 cents. So I'm not joking. This is a $1... This is basically... Why is my camera being such an asshole? This is basically a $1 base build, but um, we are gonna use uh, quite a few other things that I actually have around the house. So I'm paying a dollar for this entire build, unless you count me already spending money months ago on shit money. So yeah, you can get these basically in any Halloween store. Um, there's also a smaller version that actually doesn't have these holes here. It only has the main um, kind of holes that need to be there. Um, those cost from like five to ten dollars, and I know on Amazon they have a really accurate one that um, goes for like ten ninety nine. It has all the holes, and it's just ready for paint. That's cool and all, but this costs a dollar, guys. And we're gonna make this look from a crappy Halloween mask from Walmart to a really cool prop from the film Friday the Thirteenth. <laughs> Listen, it's been a really long day. I'm filming so many videos right now, and class and work at the same time is kicking my ass. So let's get into this fun build, guys. Uh, yeah. So the first thing we need to do, and this I guess is optional, is we're gonna fill in some holes that we don't need on this mask that really just aren't accurate. So I didn't really, I thought a few ways to do this. I thought I could use some Bondo, but I don't have any Bondo right now. So I think what I'm gonna do is I have this really thin plastic from this, um, epoxy packaging, I think I'm gonna cut up some strips and then glue it behind these so I have a hole here and then I have a hole here as well as for some reason they decided to make literal holes in the mask to hold the, um, the tag on. So I'm just gonna put some plastic behind those pieces and then put wood filler on top, which is a lot cheaper, a lot easier, a lot less toxic, and I think it's gonna work a lot better. So I'm gonna fill in these holes really quick and then we will start with the wood filler. Straps have been removed, all of the holes are um, ready for wood filler. So I'm just using this Elmer's Pro Bond uh, wood filler. I think any wood filler will work. And what I'm gonna do, it's it kind of, yeah, sometimes this one gets like, has like an oily residue on top. We're just gonna take a big chunk of it and then place it over the hole on the mask to fill it. And it doesn't have to look beautiful. So unfortunately my camera died, so I, I unfortunately missed a few steps. But what I basically did is, after the wood putty, uh, I put wood putty here, here, here and here, as you might have seen in the last clip. Um, there's the plastic backing back there. And what I did was I took a 220 grit sandpaper and just sanded over the entire thing, really smoothed down all the holes. And um, I also did it to the entire rest of the mask, which I would recommend doing it after we drill the rest of the holes. But I did it, one, so that the paint will adhere once we paint onto it a little better, and two, to give the mask uh, a sort of texture. Now after that was all done, um, I think the next step I'm gonna do is I basically just drew out all of the extra holes. Now, no matter what Jason mask you do, they all have the same hole placements um, as far as I'm aware. And I haven't really decided which mask I wanna do yet with the paint and stuff, but I think I might do uh, the Friday the 13th part six, Jason Lynch mask, because that's my favorite film. But I was also debating on doing a part seven with the whole cut up section here, so we'll see. But um, I basically, there was no, I didn't really, 
plan these out. I kind of just looked at a picture and drew it with a sharpie and I think it looks pretty, for the most part, symmetrical. So I'm gonna get my drill and begin to drill these holes out. So I finished um, basically drilling the first half of the mask out and something that you know I really should do and I debated on doing is uh, drilling pilot holes prior to uh, just going in with a, I think it's a quarter inch drill bit to be honest, whatever fits into the hole pretty well. But um, if it go too fast, as you can see here, it kind of does like this kind of crack, which um, I would freak out if I was doing a clean part three mask, but considering I was debating on doing one of the dirtier masks, I think I'm fine with it. and. Um, I don't think it should be too much of an issue. I actually think the cracks themselves are on the inside. I don't think you can feel them on the outside. So it shouldn't be a problem, but if you guys want to be really clean with your masks, go with some pilot holes. All right, so all our holes are drilled out. Um, obviously, you can see it's starting to actually look like Jason and his iconic mask. So what I'm gonna do now, which is, uh, I actually just noticed one of my holes actually that I filled with putty. It looks like the plastic popped through and it was actually because um, as I drilled this hole, my piece of plastic underneath was too big, so it pushed it out. So I'm just gonna quickly glue that in and put a little bit more um, putty on top. But as you drill the holes, you'll notice um, a lot of burrs will form. That's why I recommend sanding afterwards. So I'm just gonna try and sand off some of these burrs really quick. And then I may go in the holes and clean them up with a file. Just finished uh, cleaning out all the holes, so everything is pretty much ready for paint. But one thing I noticed that I kind of wanted to fix is that I think the mask is a little too flat. I think it should have more of like a, just a really slight curve in there, which once again, this is an optional step, but I think what I'm gonna do is just take my heat gun, heat it up a little bit, and then um, kind of bend it to shape and just hold it. So I'll let you know how that, guys, how that looks after it's done. All right, so I just reshaped the entire mask with the heat gun, and um, I got it to a shape I liked. And what I realized that I should have, you know, figured out from so much 3D printing, is that if you take the heat gun and you have any burrs inside of, or any like plastic pieces stuck inside the holes you drilled out, the heat gun will instantly melt and shrivel them away and really clean up the, the drill work you did. So I'd actually highly recommend it, even if you aren't going to reshape your mask. So now the most important thing you need to do is figure out what mask you're doing. And I decided I'm going to be doing the part six Jason Lives mask. And um, what's important that I have to do now is actually cut the, uh, the axe cut out from part three that stays for the rest of the film. So to do that, I'm just going to do that with some scissors. Using a pencil, I just, um, I don't know if you can see that, I drew out the axe shape and then the plastic is so thin that I should be able to just, yeah, cut it with these scissors. Now obviously go nice and slow and careful depending on how clean you want your axe cut to be. There is my axe cut that I think I'm gonna clean up really quick with a file and um, some sandpaper. What you do need to notice though is that since this mask is so thin, I just realized the axe cut um, really is making this mask a lot flimsier on the top here and it's gonna bend kind of weird. So I might figure out a way to put a piece of clear plastic behind this once it's all done, but we'll see when we get to the straps. So. Now it's time um, to decide whether or not you want to do some sanding before paint. So I think I might add with really rough grit sandpaper some roughness around the eyes and then around some of the holes and the edges. And this is so that when you um, begin to weather it, it really picks up into those, those grooves you made with the sandpaper. So I'm going to start doing that even though part six really doesn't have too much of that. It's pretty clean. I really want to add some of my own little twist to it. So I'm going to start doing that. So here I kind of just have a normal nail file and I'm going to take it and in some spots just try and rough up some areas for the paint to um, kind of pick up later on. So pick really when you want to do that. Some masks need it in certain spots, some don't. I'm just going to kind of do it light here and then we're going to begin to paint. All right, so the next step is obviously to paint your mask. Now, there are many different color choices. Um, some people like to use, I think, like almond and stuff. I'm going to be using, I'm sorry the lighting is so crazy, I'm using um, Rust-Oleum Satin, it's a fossil color. I'd rather um, it be flat, and then I also have a flat white. So I think what I'm gonna do is start with a coat of flat white and then add some light layers of the satin fossil. So I'm gonna do some light coats. And I'm gonna leave that to dry. 
So now that the white is somewhat, it's like half dry, I'm taking my fossil color and just lightly kind of misting it over to try and get a distinction between the two colors and kind of trying to get like a rotted, not rotted, but kind of worn in sort of look. So here's the mask after those coats. Um, as you can see, it's, I don't know if you guys can tell in the video yet, but you can see some of the scratches are being picked up by the paint, which is exactly what we wanted. So now I'm just gonna let this completely dry. I might add another coat on there, but we will see when it kind of gets a little more um, satin color rather than um, really glossy. So I'll be back. All right, so the mask is about fully dry. I actually gave it a quick coat of um, a clear matte acrylic, or I'm sorry, a clear matte clear coat to try and um, matte it down a little bit, which it did a fair job of doing. And now the next thing we have to do is uh, paint on your chevrons. So since I'm doing part six, there's only one chevron and it's um, right on the, the top triangular one. It's really kind of just a simple deformed triangle. It's been kind of worn. Part three obviously has a lot more intricate ones um, that go on the cheekbones as well as the top. And um, the best way to do those would probably actually to buy um, like a vinyl chevrons or to make them yourself using vinyl cutter, vinyl paper. But uh, since the part six of it's painted on, I'm just gonna paint it on. I'm gonna mask it off with a little bit of matte or blue masking tape and then hit it with a dark, um, I have like a crimson red uh, color that I'm gonna use to paint that on. So I'll show you what that looks like when that's done. So here's after painting the red. And something that actually kind of cool happened was I painted the red on and then hit it with a little bit of that matte clear coat and the paints, uh, so usually it'd be unfortunate, but it, fortunately they didn't like each other. So it created this really cool cracked, looks like kind of like a worn chevron shape. And I feel like the chevrons might be a little bit too high, um, but that's how it is in the, the movie. I just think it's the way this mask doesn't really match up here wise. But um, I I think I'm gonna leave it how it is, but I'll debate once it's completely finished drying. So I ended up deciding to change my design and um, I decided to do both of the chevrons, or I'm sorry, all three, so the forehead and the cheekbones, because I thought the top one just looked a little too, I don't know, we needed, it needed more going on. So I did that, unfortunately I didn't let the paint dry all the way, so there's some areas where the paint was peeled up, but it doesn't matter because I'm gonna weather the shit out of this thing. So let's get down to weathering. So what we're gonna start off doing with the weathering is I just mixed up some acrylic brown and acrylic black with a little bit of water in a cup. And it's kind of like this grayish kind of brown color. I'm gonna pour some out onto my plate here. I'm going to take a paper towel, get some on there and just begin to liberally, or yeah, rub this all over the mask. And as you can see, it's like a very thick kind of dark color. Now I would do about half the mask, just so you don't, you know, get too much on there. And then using some type of cloth, begin to wipe it off. And you may need a little bit of water, if, like mine's a little bit of too dark of a color, so I need to wipe some off there. So after wiping off most of the paint, you can see that it actually made already a huge difference. So the paint actually got into a lot of these, so uh, the areas where I went crazy with the nail file before, which were basically the edges, those are picking up the paint. So now do this, two or three more times until you get a color you like. I'm gonna try and get this pretty weathered, but that's the basic idea. Just keep adding the paint, letting it dry, and you can use a hair dryer to kind of dry in between layers. And keep adding uh, washes of this brown black. So after two, I think this is the third, third layer actually of doing this black wash. Now you guys can see how incredible this thing is starting to look. Um, I actually, so what I did was, I take a little bit of paint on my finger and just put it in areas that I wanted a little bit darker, kind of like around the eyes and the ax mark and the edges. Let that on there, stay on there for like 30 seconds and then begin to wipe it off. So now what we're gonna do is with a brush, we're gonna try and get a little bit more detail with the holes and um, in the eye sockets and stuff. So let's start with that. So here I have my brush and I have my mask, obviously. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take um, kind of one of these brushes here. Sorry, I'm just gonna swivel my camera screen around so I know I can actually see you good. I'm gonna take some of the brown paint and then using a cloth, wipe off a whole bunch of it and then what we're gonna do is kind of dry brush this into all of the holes on the mask. I really can't see that yet. Let me try and uh, focus on that. 
So once you keep doing this, it's gonna build up and then really emphasize all the holes. So I'm gonna go and do that for you guys really quick. So the paint job on the mask is for the most part finished. I actually gave it a clear coat and then was really stupid um, and started messing with the straps and then uh, I didn't realize the clear coat wasn't dry and it dragged some things. So I had to repaint some areas of the chevrons which I went over with a brighter red and then did a little bit more detail in spots where the paint came off. But yeah, so now onto the strap. So for the way I'm doing the strap is really simple. Um, I bought one of these sets of um, like scrap leather for like $5. You can find it at any craft store in the leather aisle. I cut some like basically, I think it's about one inch strips and I'm super gluing them onto themselves and the plastic and then the third piece kind of comes around here and I'm going to have, once I get started, I'm going to grab some contact cement and have that sent there. And then I'm going to weather the hell out of the straps with a little bit of leather dye and then some uh, acrylic paint. So I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. Alright, so I weathered the straps up and uh, I think it's pretty much done. The last thing I did that I didn't show, um, I got some metallic tacks. Well, they were originally like different colors, but I sprayed them uh, silver and just pushed those in to add a little bit more detail onto the mask. 